Hi there, you're watching Grumpy Opinions. Outlander is the Stars TV show set in 17th century North Carolina, all about the Fraser clan in the first years of the American War of Independence, or War of Revolution, depending on whose side you're on, I suppose. Episode 2, Allegiance, is really a mix of a few interconnected storylines. First up is about Jamie, and he's out with the Cherokee doing his bit as the Indian agent, and he's having a literal powwow with a bunch of First Nation supermodels who want some British guns to join up and be pally with the British government. And even though he isn't giving them the answers they want to hear, everything's very cordial and respectful, and what him being the bear killer and all, <laughs> remember that? Remember when he killed a guy dressed as a bear? No? Better we all forget that episode, to be honest. Anyway, him and Wee and kept the night over, and it turns out a pair of the tribe's bonny wee lassies decide to come into the tent because it's clearly they want a bit of white meat. And, yeah they've got these amorous intentions, but Jamie's having absolutely none of it and manages to get Ian to fob them off with some nonsense about him being promised or something. Anyway, he's still got a raging passion, so he goes right off home to bonk his missus and then they have a bit of a confidential chat about the future, about her time travel know-how, and then it's more boring meetings with Captain Hankey, who turns out is allergic to Adso, who's been playing in his coat, which luckily manages to stop Ian from putting his foot right in it, but Jamie's not exactly sure what he should be doing. And circumstances kind of conspire to force his hand because the supermodels pop by to see what's happening and they aren't very happy that he's dithering about and hasn't actually made the request for the guns that they wanted. And Ian's not very happy either, but eventually, after what's going to happen in the future Cons Lab number 2, this time with Bree, Jamie finally decides it's time to arm the Cherokee and writes a letter off to the governor. Meanwhile, Claire's been doing her doctoring bit, first checking up on Tom's gammy hand, which is fine, and the other one's still a bit naff and she wants to operate, but he's still against it. But unfortunately for his long-suffering daughter, that also happens to be the same hand that he uses to bail the Satan out of his kids whenever he's in a bad mood, which saves Malva from an arse whooping after she spent so much time around Claire she let the milk go off. Although bizarrely, this situation actually convinces Tom that really he does need the surgery, so that's going to be coming down the line. And Claire, you know, when she's not doing surgery and stuff, she's not doing too great because she's having hallucinations of dead old Lionel Brown and, and then liberally ethering herself into unconsciousness wherever that happens. Luckily enough though, she's sober enough to attend the funeral of a recently undead maidy who decides to zombie back to life to see how cheap her funeral was before dying again, which is just weird and kooky but at least, you know, the situation gives Roger a chance to try his hand at a bit of lay preaching. And a good thing too, since he needs the practice so he can lay down the fire and brimstone on Drunk Fungus, who's so plastered he nearly misses Parsley popping out baby number 14 or whatever they're up to by now. But after a stern talking to, he returns to hold her hand and some other stuff, you know, before the difficult birth. But turns out in the end, mum's fine and baby Henri is fine, although apparently the new Sprog has dwarfism, which Fungus isn't too happy about, but everybody else is okay, and Ian on the other hand thinks the baby's right cute, and that spurs him into opening up about how he actually had a kid once that nobody knew about, but doesn't really expand on it much. Hmm. Oh, and Brie invents matches, and literally nobody apart from her cares, like, well, apart from one wee kid that nobody really likes. Sorry, doll. Nay luck. So what did I think? Well... Much like my voice, this was actually a lot better than last week. So yeah, even if while looking back and writing up this review, not a huge amount actually happens this week. I mean, there's a few bits and bobs, but a lot of it is really just character moments and character beats and pretty much every one of the principal cast getting an ongoing conflict either set up or being pushed in a new direction. All of which either was built out of last week or things that happened in previous seasons and didn't in any way can contradict with the characters or their motivations. I mean, Jamie's got his usual conflicts, you know, the crown versus local rule, freedom versus safety and security, the needs of now versus the future conflict, and the events that he's been told are coming down the line. Claire's still got her doctoring everywhere, and she's still suffering from her PTSD. Roger's looking for direction in life and trying to square himself with his religious upbringing. Bree wants to do her technical engineering and is kind of unhappy that everybody just sees her as a baby factory and doesn't seem to care about all of her technological know-how. And Ian's still recovering from his suicidal ambitions last season, but at least he's opening up a wee bit, as well as feeling a bit of a pinch between his chosen people and his birth family. And Fungus and Parsley, I mean, well, he's drunk and sad and she's making babies, which, to be honest, isn't anything new because that's what she's been doing all the time and, and he's basically been on the sauce since he was a kid and grew up in a brothel. And I actually really like this week that we got some different time with the natives again. I mean, this time it's the Cherokee, and I'll be honest, I mean, I don't know much, like, geographically about the difference between them and the Iraqis and last season. I mean, 
I'm sure there, there are different tribes from different places and I think the, their outfits are probably different and their houses looked a bit bigger but anyway I'm sure the show will do the requisite to make a bit of a difference but I'm just a normie Scott I don't really know stuff and anyway like I said before stars don't make a spin-off show about Lord John make a spin-off show about these guys honestly do a Viking style show all about the Native Americans it would be fantastic just saying also it was good to see a bit more of the Christies and a bit more of understanding of the dynamic here and I didn't really get into that last time but Tom actually mentioned last week that his wife is burning in hell so plainly I mean he's a real religious nutcase and there's a lot of stuff going on in that household that's a bit you know disturbing because clearly he's not backwards about bringing the belt out when the mood takes him whether it's actually warranted or not and I would actually say though I mean then again I hate to be the one to immediately say well he's a baddie he's a baddie now because I mean let's face it this show has a history with women being belted it's only fair to remind that Jamie wasn't above belting his own wife back in season one and yeah yeah I know before anyone says yeah he did persuade that he would never do it again but he still did it the first time and didn't actually see anything wrong with it but anyway it's interesting because it shows us what the Christies are like behind closed doors it explains a little bit why Alan seems like a bit of a beaten dog half the time and also why Malva's so super keen to spend any time with Claire or indeed anywhere that's not at home you know even if it's going to get her a leathering I mean she's got no mum and clearly looks for a maternal teacher figure who isn't just going to belt her around the bum every time like the milk goes bad. On the negative side of things there actually really wasn't much wrong this week mainly because this was a, an episode that was kind of still setting things up and kind of peddling water and as I said it was a lot better than last week's messy all over the place with far too much crammed in but as I've said many times before this show has a soap opera-ish side at heart between like the battles and the time traveling and you know that's fine just to put some of that in there to explore the characters a wee bit and there were a few things this week though that technical things that irked me I mean one thing actually wasn't a mistake at all but just because of the way that the shot was done I actually thought this was a microphone you know booming in shot from above but I think it's actually just part of the roof of the building this TP place where they're having their meeting anyway that was just really unfortunate also there was this really really badly sort of green screen shot of Tom walking through a door I mean it just it was clearly not real I mean you can just tell because the lighting on him inside the building is just completely wrong compared to how bright it is outside and how dark it is inside. I mean yeah that's, that's a lighting thing and it's just the kind of thing I noticed but hardly a crime. Certainly not as bad as the barge from season 4 but yeah considering the rest of the scene was pretty solid I won't really complain much about that. As I said not a bad episode but one that feels more like a stopgap for stuff happening down the line. And in fairness this is only episode 2 of 8 so it makes sense that there's still some scene setting going on and the story is still getting put in place for running down the line into whatever the ongoing story actually is. But while I'm talking about that, just one thing I would like to say as a non-book reader, um, it does present some issues for the show. Since, okay, we've kind of passed the point where the show's main plot was, as discussed back in season one, it was will Claire get home, season two it was how did Claire get home, season three it was will Claire get back to Jamie, and four was holy shit everyone's in America, what's going to happen now? But we're now two seasons past that and I think that's what the show is slightly lacking for me and I've said this before but it really needs a clear narrative hook and a narrative through line so that I can see as a whole where this is going because otherwise it's, it's just the Waltons it's you know it's Little House on the Prairie um, and I appreciate that you know there does seem to be many character arts going around but if that continues I, I can see me just losing more and more interest as the show goes on because you know much as I like sort of this 18th century sort of soap opera you know that's fine it's I'd rather watch a show that actually has a bit more of an actual hook to grab me and carry me through it and yeah so anyway we'll see what happens PS if there is going to be a great big storyline dropping don't give it away don't give it away in the comments um you know if Martians land at the end of this season or something like that I'd rather that was a big surprise so whatever but just I'm just saying that's how I feel but other than that these have been my grumpy opinions cheerio